My name is Laura from Voller, and I am here back in your internet to bring you an updated rig rundown for what I recommend for electric violin. Just talking about what works for me, and I look forward to your feedback on this video. So, to start with, this is my violin. Oh, there was some pushback. Uh, on my previous video, some people think this isn't a violin. You are most welcome to call it a chin guitar. Maybe we can make that a thing. So, this is my chin guitar. It is made by Vector Violins. It is the Protégé Pro model, and it has a twin hybrid uh, Barbara transducer pickup. And it's really simple. There are no electronics on the body. There is nothing that could make it go obsolete over time. Uh, there's also no upper bout, so I'm able to hit all of, like I can play in really high positions on the lower strings. Uh, which is great if you have a band like I do that doesn't have a guitar and you're trying to fill a lot of sonic space. All right, so to move forward, oh, question about those strings. Uh, to answer that, this is the low C and this is the low F. Before we get into effects, I'm gonna talk briefly about amplification. So I guarantee you, if you walk into a guitar store, someone will try to sell you a solid state keyboard amp, or some dude will be like, you know, buy this acoustic amp, it's perfect for your needs. I'm here to tell you that I love tube amps such as this uh, Fender Blues Junior that I'm doing using today. Uh, when I play with Voller, I have a Mesa dual rectifier head and a four x 12 cab, which is way, way, way too much violin, unless you're a crazy person like me, you do not need a cab for your violin, but I definitely would say tube amp is the way to go. If you are unable to use an amp in your performance situations, use a preamp. Do not, I repeat, do not plug straight into the PA system. You will sound thin, you will sound nasally, and that's not what we want. Um, so I would recommend if you need a preamp, this is, I call it the Paraacoustic DI, I call it my brown brick, it's excellent. Um, alternatively, ART Tube MP uh, will also do the job. So let's just have a listen to this violin straight into the Fender Blues Junior. Uh, the EQ is relatively flat. I'm not using any reverb on the amp and there are no pedals turned on at this point. Let's just have a listen to my tone. Sounds all right. Nice, full spectrum, quite warm. And now we'll get into how I can make this already quality ingredient sound even better. So we will look at my first pedal. I've got EQ. This is just the simple MXR six band EQ. Uh, I'm using it simply to make my tone even better. Uh, you'll notice that it gives a slight boost for me. There are creative ways to use EQ. You could modify it to be a low pass filter, high pass filter, a boost or bass boost. But in my situation, it's kind of just here in case of emergency, if I'm sound checking and uh, there's a certain frequency that's feeding back in the room, I can pull that back. Or if I'm using an amp that I'm not familiar with, I can modify to suit my needs. All right, I'm gonna move on to wah pedals, which I love, you know, because Mini wah pedals, they're cute. Girls like cute things, right? Uh, I have, this is the Moor the Water wah pedal. And what I like about it is that it is pressure sensitive. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. And it sounds pretty fine, here we go. Great effect if you wanna sound like Simon House. I will note that uh, as far as mini wahs go, I've tried a lot. I will say that I really prefer the Crybaby, which is your classic Crybaby in a smaller package, but I don't love it for playing live because I sometimes would not notice in like an intense show moment if I had turned the pedal off. 
kind of embarrassing, and that's why I have this tiny little compact pedal on here. Another great one is the Hot Tone. It's a red pedal. It's inexpensive, and it doubles as an expression pedal. But for now, I'm working with this little guy because uh, I can clearly see what I'm doing with it. Okay, moving forward, I'm going to talk about my Pitchfork by Electro Harmonics. This is an octave pedal. It is an interval pedal. You can go up to three octaves above and below your original pitch. And I'll give you, let's have a little taste of it. I'll turn the blend up and I'm gonna listen, let's listen to one octave below and I'll play on the D string, so in regular violin range. Roll the blend up a little bit further. a cello-like effect. Um, I also like to, you can put it to octave above and below, uh, which I like to blend back the blend so I got some of my original sound in there and it's really nice for tremolo. I'll add a little reverb just for this purpose. <laughs> And just to also demonstrate an interval, let's go with, I don't know here, how about perfect fifth, classic rock interval. Tracks really well. I uh, can't say enough uh, good things about it for violin. All right, moving forward. Obviously, distortion is a huge part of my tone. I work a lot in heavy metal, in hard rock, and I present to you the Heavy by Empress FX. So, it has two sides. There is the heavy side and the heavier side. What is fantastic about this is that each side of the pedal, you can fully customize the EQ. So, for example, uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'll make, we've got a rhythm side and then a solo side. So in the rhythm side, I've got the gate on natural. This is going to keep my tone nice and clean and uh, helps me with feedback, especially since I'm standing in such close proximity to this amp for this video. And this little toggle here is the mid frequency. I've got it turned to 250 hertz. So when I move this knob, the mids, I'm either adding more or adding less of this baseline middle frequency of 250. So I'm going to dip that just a little bit and we'll hit this on and let's have a little listen to what we're dealing with for a little bit of a rhythm thing. crunchy, it's clean. I like it. Uh, moving on to the other side of the pedal. Oh, and you it's put, important to note, you can toggle between both sides easily or tap again, one side is off. Okay, so I have got the, on the heavier side, I'll put my gain up a little. I'm gonna turn the gate off so I get the beautiful decay on the violin bow. Um, and I'm not gonna really touch my frequency at all and I'll bring the weight up a little bit. Let's see how this works and if she's gonna feed back. Little feedback for you, but I don't mind that. A super customizable uh, distortion pedal. Okay. Moving forward, this might be overkill. I have a MXR micro amp. This is a simple boost pedal and I'll often play a show and I'll have it turned all the way to the left like this and then I'll roll it up as I need it, if I need it. It's a simple clean boost. If you're a violinist and you don't want to get into the dis distortion world, just starting with a clean boost is a great way to go because then you can have really nice clean solo tone. Uh, you can also use this in recording situations where I 
not using a huge massive amplifier, I don't want to crank my amp, this can cause my amp to kind of max out earlier, giving me that beautiful tone. So that is the MXR Micro Amp Clean Boost. Okay, moving forward to delay. And this is the pedal that I recommend first to anyone who's just getting into pedals, you're curious about them. Delay is just, it's like the perfect playground for electric violin. My very first pedal is, was the Deluxe Memory Man, which is massive. I will, I love you with all my heart forever and ever. I will never get rid of that pedal, but I was looking for something that can do something similar, but in a smaller package. So with the Amnesia by Alexander Effects, there is a toggle that does three different like vintage delay mods. This one's pretty clean. This one distorts nicely. Let's just like play with this for a little bit. My kind of go-to thing with delay is that if I can't create the sound of a spaceship landing, I'm probably not interested. So there's that nice uh, ability to lose control is what I appreciate about uh, these kind of analog delays. Uh, I play probably most frequently with the third mod, which is kind of slightly murky. Let's hear this one with the bow. Also, uh, sometimes I tip this over to the chorus side of the pedal. I'll take the repeat down, I'll take the time down, and we get a nice little chorus shimmer. A little more mix on that, just so you can hear it. forward the moment that perhaps you've all been waiting for uh, you've probably noticed the most fashionable pedal on my board is the Zoya also by Empress FX in Ottawa Ontario and this pedal brace yourself is the pedal that could possibly end this pedal board and all pedal boards essentially this has everything you can think of inside of it and you can create anything with it. It is my personal goal next time I'm able to get on an airplane to not even need anything other than the Zoya. So let's just take a look here. Um, I, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to go super deep because I realized that that would take an hour. So what I'm going to do, I'm scrolling through my patch list and we're going to look at something really simple. This is a patch that I made specifically for working with another artist. And in the show, I need to sound like a violin section for a moment. So what you do, if you have some background in modular synthesizers, that's useful, but someone like me can figure this out. So I have the white boxes are my input and my output. And this purple here, this is a chorus and I'm able to specifically adjust and save all of the different parameters, including rate and width. And the blue strip here, this module, this Tetris block is a reverb. And again, I've got the delay time, I've got the low EQ, everything is customized so that whenever I perform this song, I get a perfect sound of the string section. All that to say that if you were at a gig and or a rehearsal and someone was like, hey, do you have a flanger? You'd be like, oh yeah, do I ever? Do you have uh, the bit crusher? Oh yeah, do I ever? It is all inside this pedal. Again, coming back at you with a future video exclusively talking about my love for the Zoya. And moving forward, 
Um, we will bypass this. Doing my best to give you all effects isolated and not to cheat is the Polera by Digitech. And it is one of my favorite uh, reverb pedals that I've ever owned. I like to have reverb later in my chain because then if I forget to stop a loop, I forget to stop another pedal, I can turn the trails off or on in this case. And we've got all of your, your level, your liveliness, your decay, and all of the classic things like hall um, and room. But then we also have fun things like halo, modulated, and ooh, let's have a little bit of a listen to um, let's see what the reverse is all about. And we'll do this with a little pizzicato. So in addition to being a great classic reverb pedal, could really open some windows to, cr to creativity for you. All right, I am just about done here, but I realize that it is important to talk about a loop pedal. And I've actually built one in the Zoya for my purposes right now, but I'm gonna show you what I would recommend. Hold on, I forgot to get it. I like the Electro Harmonics 360. This is the winner for me compared to other loopers like the Boss uh, Little Red Pedal or the Ditto because you can store up to 11 different loops and I could even do stuff with it like I have little stickers on here because I would play synthesizer at home, record a drone, and then be able to take that drone to a show with me. So I would strongly recommend this if you want to get into playing around with loops. All right, and last in my chain, is I have the, I have a volume pedal, and that's probably weird. Works really well for me for controlling myself, for full, like for fading out drones at the end of Volar uh, compositions. What is my power supply? It is the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power, and my cables are, I cut them myself, they are George L cables. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition of Violin Rig Rundown with Laura C. Bates. Be sure to check out my band Volar. We put out a new album in November called Death Cult. It's super evil. There is a lot of wah pedal on it. And I will just, uh, I'll leave you by uh, just nerding out a little bit more.